Hey guys, I'm Amit Kumar and welcome to this video in which we are going to talk about block and inline elements. Till now we have talked about various types of elements but in today's video we are going to categorize them among the two basic types like block or inline elements. Also we are going to talk about what are the characteristics of a block and inline element. So let's proceed ahead. And guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to stay updated with proper Salesforce tutorials and want to watch more tutorials, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. Also, if you have thoughts or question, drop it in the comments. I would love to hear from you and promise I will read every single one. Thank you so much guys. And now you can proceed with the video. A block level element always starts on a new line and the browser automatically adds some space or margin before and after the element. So whenever you are using a block level element, there is always going to be some margin before and afterwards it. And at the same time, all the block level elements will start in a new line. A block level element always occupies the full width available and stretches out to the left and right as far as possible. So if you are using a block level element, it's going to take the full width of the screen available to it. Two commonly used block level elements are P and Dev. Though there are different types of block level elements and in front of your screen you can see the various types of block level elements that are available to you. But the two basic types of block level elements that we basically use in most of our HTML pages are paragraph tag and div tag. Now paragraph tag is basically used to provide a specific paragraph in your page whereas the div tag is used to provide a block which can contain several other types of elements. We are going to use div tag a lot of time during our website designing as well as when we are going to talk about visual force pages, aura components or lighting web components. The various types of block level elements is shown in front of you and there are certain other elements as well but most of these elements are commonly used block level elements in HTML. Inline elements does not start in a new line. So if you are having two different inline elements, both can reside in the same line itself. Inline element only takes up as much width as necessary. So it completely depends what you have contained inside the inline element. So if the inline element is having only a paragraph with three words, it is going to take only that much of space. And if it is having a very big paragraph, it may take the space of the whole width of the screen. So it completely depends what is existing inside an inline element and it takes up only that much of width as it is necessary. The commonly used inline elements is shown in front of you. But the most commonly used inline element that we use for our formatting and that we are going to use in our websites, in our visual force pages, or a components or lighting web components is span element. So it's pretty much of talk and now it's time to see the things practically. Hey guys, welcome to the practical session of block and inline elements and let's quickly create some HTML pages where we are going to see the differences between block and inline elements. So let me create the first page over here and let me name it as b and i dot html. And let me quickly add the basic format of an HTML page. Now in this page, I'm going to add two different elements which can help you to understand the difference between a block and an inline element. So one of the famous block level element is P tag. So I'm going to add two paragraphs over here as this is paragraph one and this is paragraph two. Because I have saved it, let's quickly see what's the output of this specific change. So let's go to the block and inline elements folder, click on b and i dot html and you can see both these paragraphs are appearing in two different lines. Let me right click on the page and click on inspect. Now from here, you can click on this arrow at the bottom left and go and hover over any of the element. So you can clearly see both these elements is having some sort of margin 
before and after the content in form of orange line now this is the margin before and afterwards and it is taking up the whole width of the page or the whole width of the screen now let me come back to my page and quickly add two inline elements over here one of the famous inline element that we have is anchor tag so let me quickly add anchor tag as this is anchor one and this is anchor two to both these tags let me quickly add href and i'm not going to provide any url to it so just the href attribute with a blank value let me quickly save it now you can clearly see on the page that both these anchors are appearing in one single line and if I'm clicking on this arrow and hovering over any one of the anchor, you can see the width of that specific anchor is taking the sufficient space that is required for the content inside it. Now definitely if I will increase the content, it is going to increase the width of that specific element. And there is no margin before and after the content as well. Now this specific page can explain you the basic difference between a block level element and an inline element. Now let me give you another example where I am going to use both block level and inline element which I am going to use to provide a specific style to it. So let me quickly come here and create one new file as bni2. So let me right click over here, click on new file name it as bni2.html let me paste the basic content from the previous page itself and let me quickly add a paragraph over here now for this paragraph i am going to take some random text over here so you can see here i have added some random text inside this paragraph we know the paragraph is nothing but a block level element now let me go back to the page refresh here and open bni2.html and you can clearly see this paragraph over here. Now to this block level element, if I'm going to provide any type of style, for example, let me provide a style over here as color. Now the styles that I'm going to provide here is going to use some CSS. So if you are not getting what I'm using over here, just don't worry at all. We are going to start with CSS and we are going to understand all these stuff. So don't worry and try to ignore for the thing that I'm going to add. Now basically what I have done here is I have tried to include a CSS to change the color of the text to red. So once I will save the file, you can clearly see the whole paragraph is changed into red color. Now suppose within the paragraph, if I want to make any change over here to any specific text, I can use a div element over here or a span element over here to do the same. Now, of course, if I'm going to use a div element, it's going to change the line. For example, before this second line, which is lorem ipsum has been industries. If I add a div and if I keep everything afterwards inside the div and as soon as I will save it, it's not only going to change the style over here, also, it's going to change the line. So div, which is a block level element, is going to change the line for it because it is a complete block in itself. If I don't want to change the style of the rest of the thing and I want to change the style of anything in between and if I try to do that with div itself, let's try to do that. So you can see what I have done here is this specific line I kept outside the div and the line in between I kept inside the div but still the style which I have given to the paragraph is not applied to this specific line which is after the div and the reason for that is I have used a block level element. Now instead of div if I would have used a span you can see the difference. So I change it to span and let me save this. So first of all the line is not changed everything remain in the same line itself let me provide and change the color to blue for this specific span so you can see whatsoever is existing between the span is only appearing in blue color the text before it and afterwards it is having the same style which i have provided to the outer level block level element so in short we can say a block level element can be used to provide a style to a whole text itself and an inline element can be used to provide a style for something 
within the text. This is the basic difference where we are going to implement a block level and an inline element. Now that marks the end of today's video. See you soon in the next video. Till then, thank you and take care.